Well, today is Labor Day here in America, and that means for all those people who have especially industrial type jobs, you get the day off. People go camping. Today I'm out taking a hike. And it got me thinking about the Christian response to those who are without work, those who are the poor among us, and exactly what it is we have to offer and how we should go about it. Well, that brings us to our passage, of course, Acts chapter 3. Here we go. It says, Pete and John were going to the temple in the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And a man who'd been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the temple, which is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. So here we have the situation. We have Pete and John, they're going into the temple and there is a man there that's been begging for years, basically forever. And it's right by the temple gate called the Beautiful. I love these little details about what the gate is called and how long the man has been there, how long he has been doing um, his begging at this exact location. And so he is begging, and so Pete and John have to respond to this, right? So here we go. Verse 3, when Pete saw John was about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. But Pete, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, look at us. He began to give them his attention, expecting, of course, to receive something from them. But he said, I do not possess silver or gold. What I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene, walk. I love that. You know, so often we want to help those in need, those who are perhaps dealing with addiction, those who are without work, um, the, the homeless, those who perhaps are lame, and we're not sure what to do. And we know that if we were to just hand them cash or perhaps try to give them a job, do the things that we can do, that isn't really the answer to what they need. Here, Pete goes right to the answer and says, um, what I have I can give you, but it's not going to be money. Stand and walk. I love that. He looks right to the Spirit and says, we're going to give you actual healing. Seizing him by the right hand. He raised them up, and immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. With a leap, he stood upright and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. A couple of things here. Number one is that this is a man who has been lame since birth. He immediately starts walking. This is not a medical miracle that took therapy. This is an absolute God miracle where he stepped in the gap, and this man now knew how to walk. He follows them into the temple, and he he begins, begins to praise God. Verse 9, all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they were taking note of him as being that one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg arms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Here's what I find uh, the most amazing about this passage. The healing happens, that's great. Pete and John saw a man in need and said, I think we can do something about this. Reached out to the father and the man was healed. The man gets his legs back, he gets to walk, all of that is good. But what I find the most impressive is people who knew this man and knew his story, those were the ones that got the most impact. And this brings us to our topic today and the thing that I think is most encouraging for us when we attempt to help someone else. And that is, I only have so many people that I'm in contact with. There's only a certain number of people who care about what I think or what I say or that I have dinner with. That group is limited. When we reach out to another person and share the grace of God and let God change their lives, there's a whole new group of people that they get to impact that I never would have impacted on my own. So that, very simply put, is my encouragement to you this week. That is, when you are coming into contact with someone in need, do the bit that you can. Share your faith with them. Share the loving kindness the grace and mercy of God because they will impact people you will never even get a chance to meet, let alone have spiritual impact on you. Well, I hope this has been as encouraging for you as it has been for me. God bless. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Bye now.